pushing and a pulling in the great big harbor in the great big world is so much fun so many brand new things to discover waking with the sun gotta get the job done oh theodore and emily vote up hank and george and the harbor master too oh hello you know i was just thinking about all the fun i had as an officer aboard this ship well, that was in the days before I was harbor master here in the big harbor. <laughs> I remember my old captain. Huh. I learned a lot from him. And we were good friends. Well, you know, when you're at sea together for months at a time, you make new friends, and sometimes they become best friends. You know, I've been lucky. Everywhere I've gone, I've made new friends. And today, well, I've got lots of best friends right here in the big harbor. I think we have one of the friendliest harbors in the whole wide world. As a matter of fact, I think friendship is wonderful, don't you? But you know, I remember a time when, when Theodore was new here. <laughs> he thought he might have uh, too many best friends. Emily had just returned from a long trip back across the ocean, from France. Theodore wanted to know all about her trip. Emily told him that when she had first arrived, all she wanted to do was to rest her tete, which means her head in French. But after a nap, she was ready for a fete, which means a party. Now, Theodore thought tete and fete were terrific sounding words. Emily had been to so many wonderful places and had so many great adventures. Theodore was very impressed. Emily, you're my best friend, he said. Thank you, Theodore, replied Emily. And off she went with the kind of smile you get when someone's made you very happy. Later that same afternoon, Hank was showing Theodore around the harbor. Now with Hank as a tour guide, there's never a dull moment. Let's see who can be first around Bedford Bowie, said Hank. And the two tugs were off before you could say one toot. Hank was the first around Bedford. He was making the fastest turns Theodore had ever seen. Theodore was very impressed. Hank, you're my best friend, he said. Great, said Hank. I've always wanted to have a best friend. Are you sure, Theodore? Sure, I'm sure, replied Theodore. Can you show me how to make fast turns? Sure, I'll show you, said Hank. He was almost tripping over his own words. He was so excited. We can start right after my next job. And with that, the two new best friends promised to meet later near the sandy beach and tooted their goodbyes. Theodore was racing along practicing his speed turns when he saw Fodak. Fodak was paying close attention to the shoreline. His special underwater sonar machine was making its familiar poing poing sound. Theodore knew that meant Fodak had found something. Fodak was worried about what the changing sounds from the machine meant. There's an underwater sandbar here, he said. That means the water isn't very deep. A tugboat could get stuck here. I better warn the other tugs, said Fodak. Theodore was very impressed. Fodak was always finding important things with his special machine. Then, Theodore saw Fodak's new red lifeboat sitting behind his stack. What a great lifeboat, said Theodore. Fodak explained he'd been given his new red lifeboat because he was a firefighting tug. That way, he said, everyone knows that I'm a very important tugboat. Theodore thought about the lifeboat. He could almost imagine cruising through the big harbor with a bright red lifeboat that showed everyone he was important. And then Theodore said, Fodak, could I try your lifeboat? Well, Fodak wasn't too sure about that. After all, if he let Theodore use his lifeboat, he wouldn't have one. And tugboats must always have a lifeboat. Maybe we could trade, he suggested. I'll lend you my lifeboat for the afternoon, and you can lend me yours. Theodore couldn't have been more pleased. He felt so happy, he just blurted out, Fodak, you're my best friend. Then Fodak told Theodore that he would show him how the sounds from his underwater sonar machine helped them find things. Let's go right now, he said. But Theodore hesitated a moment. There was something else he was supposed to do, but in all the excitement, he had forgotten just what it was. Fodak tooted for Theodore. Come on, Theodore. 
and Theodore set off after his new best friend. Meanwhile, Theodore's other best friend, Hank, had just finished pulling a barge and was looking for Theodore because Theodore had promised to practice speed turns with him. A little later, Theodore and Fodok were floating along finding underwater sandbars together. With Fodok's bright red lifeboat sitting proudly on his deck, Theodore felt like the most important tugboat in the whole harbor. Just then, Theodore saw Hank racing towards him. Theodore, cried Hank, who seemed quite worried. Oh, I'm so glad to see you. What happened? Hank had been looking everywhere for Theodore. And when he hadn't shown up at the sandy beach, Hank had started to get worried. Are you okay, Theodore? He asked. I, I thought we were going to practice speed turns together. What, did you get lost? Before Theodore could say anything, Fodok interrupted. He didn't get lost. He got finding. He explained that they were spending the afternoon practicing finding things with his underwater sonar machine. Don't you want to practice speed turns with me, Theodore? Asked Hank. Theodore knew he had forgotten something, and that was it. Now he remembered that he'd promised to practice with Hank, but he had also said he would look for things with Fodak. For a moment, he didn't know what to say. Then Hank noticed Theodore's new red lifeboat. Where'd you get that? Theodore explained that he had traded lifeboats with Fodak. Yes, said Fodak. That's because we're best friends. Well, it's not like Hank to be too quiet about anything. But for a moment, he was very, very quiet. Theodore and Fodak were pretty quiet, too. Hank was the first to speak. Oh, well, said Hank finally, with as much cheerfulness as he could muster. I'll, I'll just do something by myself, I guess. He told the others that this would be a good chance for him to practice quick stops. Now, Theodore was surprised to see that Hank didn't seem upset about not being Theodore's best friend. And to tell you the truth, Theodore was a little upset himself. Didn't Hank want to be his best friend? Hank, are you sure that it's okay that I'm not your best friend? Asked Theodore. Sure, answered Hank. But then he hurried away very quickly. Well, that seemed strange. Theodore felt uncomfortable. Did Hank really not care that he wasn't Theodore's best friend? Did Hank really mean what he had said? Later that afternoon, George was in the middle of a tall tale about his latest adventure on the high seas when the dispatcher turned with an important message. Three big ships have arrived at the same time, he announced, and we need every tugboat to get them in as soon as possible. But where was Hank? No one knew. Well, said the dispatcher, you'd better find Hank, because we need three pullers and two pushers right away. And so the four tugboats set off to search for Hank. Well, wouldn't you know that Theodore would be the first to find Hank? He looked like he was stuck right on that sandbar Fodok had found with his underwater sonar machine. Theodore knew that if he got too close to Hank, he might get stuck too. Hank, come on, Hank, yelled Theodore. Get off that sandbar. We're all needed for a big job. But Hank didn't answer. Theodore tried again. Uh. Hank, he called. Are you all right? Hank still didn't answer. Why wasn't Hank answering him? Maybe he was hurt, or maybe. And then Theodore had a terrible thought. He turned around and raced for help. Theodore found Emily in the next cove looking for Hank. Emily, Emily, come quick, shouted Theodore. I've found Hank. I, I think he's stuck in the sand, but, but he won't answer me. Well, why won't he answer you, said Emily. Theodore looked very worried, and then he said, I don't know, but I, I think, well, maybe he's angry with me. Angry with you, said Emily. What for? He was my best friend, answered Theodore. But then he found out that Fodak and I are best friends. I thought I was your best friend, said Emily. Well, replied Theodore, you were, but well, well, Fodak traded lifeboats with me. And then Emily saw the bright red lifeboat on Theodore's deck. But she just repeated, you said I was your best friend, Theodore. Emily, are you angry with me too, said Theodore. 
Before Emily could reply, George and Fodak arrived in the cove. They'd also spotted Hank. Come on, shouted George, and the tugs hurried toward Hank. All except for Theodore. He stayed behind. He was sure Hank was angry with him and didn't want his help. That made Theodore feel terrible. Meanwhile, Emily, George, and Fodak buttoned onto Hank and began to pull. They pulled and pulled as hard as they could, but they couldn't budge Hank. He was stuck fast in that sandbar. Theodore watched the other tugs. It's all because of me, he said. All because I wanted things for me. Just then, George turned to Theodore. Theodore, he puffed, we need your help. Theodore buttoned on and began to pull. Suddenly, Hank budged a bit. He was coming loose. Everyone, all at once, when I count to three, roared George. One, two, three. Hank was finally free. Everyone let out a great cheer, and Theodore was surprised to hear himself giving the loudest cheer of all. Thanks for helping, Theodore, said Hank. I could really feel the difference when you started to pull. How did you get stuck anyway, Hank? asked Emily. Well, Hank explained that he had been practicing quick stops and headed into the cove at full speed. That's when he got stuck on the hidden sandbar. I guess I really wasn't watching where I was going, he said. I was thinking about Theodore not being my best friend anymore. Is that why you didn't answer me when I called you? asked Theodore in a very small voice. Hank explained that he didn't hear Theodore calling him. He was facing the wrong way. Well, when Theodore heard this, he was very relieved. But all the tugs were still staring at Theodore. Just whose best friend was he, anyway? At first, Theodore didn't know what to say. He had said he was Hank's best friend. And Hank was lots of fun to practice with, but he really liked being with Emily, too. Oh, she had been to so many places and knew so many things. And Fodak, oh, well, Fodak was smart in a different way and was always helping others. And George was strong and brave. Theodore looked around at the other tugs and tried to decide who his best friend really was. He thought about how it felt when everyone rescued Hank, working together, and the big cheer when Hank finally came free. And then Theodore knew the answer. I think we're all best friends, he said. That's right, said Emily. We sure are, said Fodok. You bet, added George. Everyone's best friends, tooted Hank as if he just thought of it. They were all so happy they didn't notice that Pearl, the pilot boat, had arrived. We've got to get to work right away, she said. A wind is coming up, and we have to bring those big ships in fast. Right, shouted the tugs, and they all headed off to work. All the best of friends in the friendliest harbor of them all. Of course, soon after that, Theodore and Fodak, well, they, they traded lifeboats back, and Hank and Theodore and Fodak spend many happy hours finding things with Fodak's underwater sonar. Now, if I could just find my pencil. I had it when I was looking at that picture of my old captain. Of course. <laughs> it's an old habit I picked up from you-know-who. Well, thanks for visiting us here in the Big Harbor. We'll see you all again next time. So long. Theodore, he's a tugboat and a friendly tugboat, too. A friendly tugboat, too. Oh, Theodore and Emily, Fodak, Hank and George and the harbor master, too.